Welcome everybody, my name is Olivia Gdaniewicz and you're watching Olivia Connects. Today we're here with the mayor of Oakville, Rob Burden. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Olivia. So for those who don't know, Oakville is in the province of Ontario, which is in Canada. So for all of you guys watching in the States and all around the world, now you know. Oakville was also ranked the number one place to live in Canada, which makes me super happy because I just moved here. Oh. So I'm sure that makes you super happy as well. Well, you have very good judgment. <laughs> I've actually never heard anyone say anything bad about Oakville, which is why I want to ask you, what's the biggest challenge Oakville is facing right now? And how is your education and everything that you've learned help you run this city? Oh my. Well, <laughs> I know, it's a loaded uh, question. <laughs> I think everything boils down to keeping Oakville the greatest place to live might be the number one challenge. Uh, I believe that in life you always have competition and if you aspire to be number one that means you've got to run harder, work harder and uh, keep your head on a swivel as uh, we say I like that mentality, yeah, absolutely. And how has your education I guess influenced how you make decisions here in the office? I'm not sure education is a prerequisite to be mayor. Okay. If you look at the, I'm the 38th person to be mayor of Oakville, and I don't think any two have had the same education. And so I think it's safe to say that anybody can aspire to be mayor. In Ontario, the law is that you only have three or four really basic criteria you have to pass in order to be eligible to be mayor. Uh, the first one is you have to be 18 or over. Check. <laughs> the second is that you have to be a, a resident and a citizen. So check. Check. And of Ontario? Of Ontario and Oakville. Okay. Well, of Oakville. Okay. Citizen of Canada and resident of Oakville. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third one is, um, is the tough one. That's what separates the grown-ups from the kids. <laughs> you can't be in jail. Okay. And check, check in your case. We're definitely, we're, we're here, so. <laughs> yeah. You have to be, you have to be an, you have to be eligible to vote. Okay. And, um, and which is another way of saying those other things. Brilliant. And what made you want to become mayor? Because that's not something everybody aspires. Well, uh, it all began <laughs> <laughs> one night with my, uh, so I was a hockey dad uh, and we would take our kids out of town to tournaments and we would come back, drop the kids home and then we'd get together for a little moment of relaxation and we would always say why don't we have stuff as good as they have about wherever we had been and isn't Oakville one of the better off places why don't why isn't our stuff as good I don't like whining I'm not wired to whine I'm wired to work yeah. and one night I said uh, you know kind of foolishly well if you poked out both my eyes and broke both my arms I could run the place better <laughs> let's all run and build the stuff we're missing. And the next day, nobody would let me forget that. So I wound up running and I became mayor. And uh, we built, well, we, we doubled the community facilities in Oakville, ranging from hockey to soccer to just arts and culture and music. That's great, especially for me because I'm definitely into that stuff. <laughs> so what, are, what does a mayor actually do? Uh, when I was elected, I called my lawyer who'd done all my corporate stuff with me and I said, well, you're, you've got the biggest law firm in the country and you have a huge municipal law department. Why don't you review all the uh, legislation that, that um, has anything to do with mayors and I'll come in in a couple of weeks and you can brief me on all my powers. And he called me up only a week later and he said, we're done. And I go, great, when's the meeting? <laughs> and he goes, oh, we don't need a meeting. And I go, why not? And he says, you have no powers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you just got one vote. <laughs> and, uh, and I said to him, what am I going to do? And he said, well, your whole life you've been known for inspirational leadership. And when you have no power, that's all you got. Oh. You'll just have to do that. <laughs> well, that was beautifully worded. <laughs> so what do you love about your job or what do you hate, I guess is a strong word, or like, give me some pros and cons. Oh, well, I don't think there are any cons. Okay. Um, it, I mean, it's silly to go out for a job and to work as hard as you have to to get elected 
and to spend the money that you have to spend to get elected if you don't like it. So yeah. I tell people if you're, if you're a people person and you like meeting people, it's a great job. In our system in Canada, you're, you're not going to get elected unless people want you. <laughs> I was going to say, because you've been here since 2006, does it get easier each election? I think it does. Um, every job gets easier as you get used to it. There is a training factor. Um, in a corporation, we would say that you know when you hire somebody, you're investing, the company is investing its time and resources in training and developing the person they hired, no matter who, no matter what the, the job is. And uh, you know the people that you have working for you are can I suggest your most valuable asset? And uh, so there's a tendency in the electorate to uh, keep what they know and like and, uh, and to throw out what they don't like. And uh, there's a saying in politics that you don't get thrown into office, you get thrown out. Mm. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so I noticed when walking into the room that you have an autographed photo of Obama care to elaborate? I have that because my daughter Rachel, who was the instigator of YTV, later in life when she grew up, went to work for Obama in the White House and she got that for me. That's and, incredible, um, so family and politics. <laughs> well, and uh, he assigned her to the uh, Lucky 13 member task force that wrote the famous Health Care Act. And uh, she now works as a health policy consultant in Washington for, and gives advice to hospital corporations and doctors' corporations and HMOs and all of those about how to use the Health Care Act that so far they haven't figured out a way to kill. <laughs> well, you must be a proud father. Well, I am a proud father. Now that you're a resident of Oakville, you need to learn a saying. There's a special saying in yes, Oakville. Yes, teach me. And this was invented by uh, former mayor Harry Barrett, who passed uh, at, at the age of 93 um, last month and uh, this is what he taught me to say and uh, everybody else who ever heard him it goes like this Oakville is a city that calls itself a town and acts like a village now can you repeat that without help Oakville is like a town no so let's, oh, shoot. let's say it together Oakville is a city, city that, that calls itself, itself a, a town, town and acts, acts like, like a village, village. okay so that captures the spirit of Oakville, yeah. I have found. And uh, I've never actually met a person who failed to agree that that captures the spirit of Oakville. And before I let you go, Rob, if there was another job you could be doing that you haven't already done in your life, what would it be and why? Author. And uh, I'm also going to write a book about uh, being mayor. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Rob. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys enjoy this video and want to see more stuff like this, hit the like button, subscribe, and we will see you next week. Thanks. Thanks for being here.